I started playing in like 79. It was at a time when the economy was bad here, similar to the economy we were just kind of going through right now, and everybody was laid off, so I took a, a year and through unemployment and learned how to play the mandolin and never went back to work. And I would describe myself as a working musician. That's what a working musician does. They play gigs, they learn how to teach and give workshops and occasionally write songs and any other way you can make money off music. Wiley and Son Publishers, the people who do the Dummies series books, just happened to decide, hey, maybe we need a mandolin for a Dummies book. You can do that. 76. Got offered a contract to write mandolin for Dummies. As a teacher, that has completely um, put me in a different place. Um, I got my first guitar when I was four. And that's when I started trying to play. By the time I was, you know, six and seven years old, I could play some songs. A lot of old fiddle tunes and stuff like that my dad taught me, and I just um, figured out how to keep a rhythm, you know, behind him while he would do leads and stuff, so. Yeah, people really liked it. So in May of 2011, I graduated from high school a year late because I had dropped out and, you know, I kind of was just doing whatever, going down a bad path kind of, but I ended up staying with my friend's family for a while and um, we lived out in the country and on a farm, you know, and she was like, well, if you're going to live here, you're going to go back to school and, you know, you're going to do your homework and stuff like that and so I did and then I graduated and after that I kind of was just like I wasn't playing music um, you know professionally just in my bedroom and stuff. I started applying for some jobs up here and I landed a job at the Grand Traverse Resort and I worked there in housekeeping for I worked there for almost two years. I heard there was this hotshot kid that had moved to town who was supposed to be really good. I had cabin fever because I just sat at my computer for weeks on end. And so I went down there and um, they were right. I mean, the band he was playing with was okay, but he really stood out as something special. I, I knew who Don was. I had heard. I had looked him up on YouTube and stuff even. Like that? You see that? And so he came to see us play and introduced himself and gave me his card and said, uh, well, you know, we should jam sometime. And I said, all right. And he said, well, I'm not going to call you if it doesn't involve money. <laughs> so I had no band, but a gig booked. So I called Billy because I had met him at the coffee shop a couple months prior to that. And, and I said, hey, I want to play Saturday night. I got a gig. Well, he goes, well, yeah, yeah, I guess. He said, well, where do you live? I'll let me ride my bike over and we'll play and just see if, see if anything's there. So I did and we sat in his living room and played for an hour or so and both went, yeah, let's go do the gig. I think this is going to work. And I don't think we've had many more practices of it. You know, playing music with him is a blast. But no, I, I know how to book gigs. I know how to read a contract. I, I, you know, how to get us there on time. He's the star. I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, you know, I'm the guy that has the van. I think maybe the first or second time we got together, I said, well, do you ever sing? He's like, oh, you don't want you don't want me singing, you know. <laughs> but no, he sings now. It's good. The way we dress when we play, the fact that I'm learning how to sing those high tenor parts—that's all new. I 
finish each other's licks and stuff. Sometimes to the point where it's like weird. <laughs> It's a musical conversation, you know? And so when we get into that zone and we're just kind of on fire, it's like, it's almost like we're in the same thing. Like we're thinking the same and playing the same and just like, I, I can't explain it. The only person I've ever had anything like that with is my dad. know some of some kind of the same language I mean that's all I can say is as soon as we started playing the tempos and how we trade things back and forth and how how I would play rhythm while he played the melodies or how he would play the rhythm while I did and we never had to really say anything and working as a working musician, but it's a different genre. Uh, and, um, you know, the age difference and all this, yeah, we're taking a huge gamble. Um, but what are you gonna do, you know? Go get a job at Walmart? <laughs> that doesn't sound any fun, so, so we might as well go for it. You can't just play music with everybody, no matter how good they are, you know. I've played music with people who are amazing musicians and it's just like, for some reason it just doesn't work. You don't think the same musically or, you know, something like that. I, I wasn't looking for, for what Billy brings to the table, it just, it just happened. Funny because I can't, I can't, no, he can't explain it either. I don't think it's weird. It just happens. <laughs> I don't know what I would do if I, if I if I wasn't playing music. It's changed me a lot, you know, for the better. I used to really be a, you know, I don't, I don't really want to say I was like a bad person or anything, but I was like, I mentioned earlier that I was going down a bad path, and um, I don't know, I think the music kind of pulled me out of it because I have to focus and stay busy on something, and, you know, I just want to do good. All right, Billy, what I want you to do is look up, Don, take two steps out that way, off the side a little bit more. Most of the guys I played with in my 20s aren't still playing. I am, so you know, after a while, as people fall away, <laughs> you end up being you end up being the most experienced guy around by default because everyone else gave up. 
So, I, you know, I think that's a really big part of following your dream and being a successful artist is just don't give up. Just keep doing it. Because if you give up, you know what's going to happen. You know, you'll get a day job, and you're gonna you're gonna wish that you hadn't. <laughs> if, if you're if, if you're truly an artist, you can't do that. You can't go get a factory job or a desk job. You'll be miserable. You know, people are always like, "Oh man, you you need to go to Nashville, or you know, you're gonna be famous, or blah blah blah, and this and that." And it's like, I don't care. You know, where I'm at, if I'm playing in some like little coffee house or you know, some huge arena. It doesn't matter to me. If I'm making a living playing music and making people happy, then... No. No, right now, I don't... I don't picture myself moving from here for a while. I'm here in northern Michigan, and, you know, where else would I want to be? If nothing changed at all, if it never got any better than this, this is already a huge success. So... I'll take anything beyond this, but uh, this is good. When I get into a situation where, you know, there's a banjo and a fiddle and everybody's jamming and at a festival or something, if somebody hits a run on the banjo or the fiddle sounds just right, it, it, I get deja vu, like, I get this weird... Like, that's what it is, it's deja vu, it's like from my childhood or something, you know. Um, it's, it's really great. Uh -huh. I came back to my roots, you know, and I came back strong. And I don't think I'll wander far from what I'm doing. Again, I really love this music. And I think a lot of other people do too. 